If you love history, but especially military history or anything to do with old weapons and armor and military uniforms and everything to do with Napoleon, including his tomb, do not skip the military museum in the heart of Paris. This place is so cool, I almost can't describe it. We spent most of a day here. There are like half a million things to see. It is a vast collection. It's the third largest collection of old weapons and armor in the world. One of the best collections in Europe, if not the world. Definitely worth a stop here. And I have an interesting Napoleon story to tell you here that we will come to shortly, but I'm going to just give you some backstory on this amazing place while we look at some of the photos I took as a tourist when we walked through it. This was originally an idea of Louis XIV. He wanted to create a building to honor the men who had served in France's military. It was called the Hôtel des Invalides. It was open to its first veterans in 1674. By 1715, there was a community of 4,000 people living inside the walls here. It included a barracks, a convent, a factory, a hospital, and a hospice. The first thing you'll see in the courtyard here is the artillery collection that spans 200 years. The statue of Napoleon overlooking this court was brought here in 1911, but it was sculpted from bronze gathered from enemy cannons that were seized during Napoleon's 1805 campaign, especially the Battle of Austerlitz. The Soldier's Chapel in the Church of the Golden Dome here is one of Paris's two cathedrals, the other one being Notre Dame, created in 1706 and designed by the same architect who designed the Hall of Mirrors at Versailles. The dome is covered in 550,000 gold leaves that only weigh about 30 combined pounds. Until the Eiffel Tower was built, the dome here was the tallest building in Paris. This was also where royal mass was said during Louis XIV's time. During World War II, this site was turned into a barracks for enemy troops, but I was amazed to learn that a family who lived on the premises at the time also secretly sheltered Allied pilots here for three years. The museum is stunning to walk through. There are more weapons and armor and things here than you could imagine. Everything from personal pistols and weaponry to amazing uniforms and pieces of Napoleon's personal kit, like his attaché case when he was the first consul. And for all my horse lovers out there, you will see lots of different bits of harness and regalia used in processions. There are two saddles here. The second one after this was the one made for Napoleon's coronation procession right here. Amazing. And you will also see right nearby the taxidermied mount of his last horse, Vizier, who was given to Napoleon in 1802 by the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire as a friendship gift. He is also portrayed in the painting of Napoleon called 1814, and he followed Napoleon into exile on Elba. He has his own long story. After Napoleon returned to France, Vizier also did, but was not in active service. He outlived Napoleon by five years, dying at the age of 33, and then his taxidermied remains were smuggled out of France to England, disassembled and in a large trunk. It was then displayed for several years and then returned to France to be stored in the Louvre for about 30 more years where he was rediscovered in storage and moved to the current location in the museum near the resting place of his owner. If you love stories of Napoleon's horses, there were about 130 of them, but another one that was very famous was legendarily called Marengo, who came home from Egypt with Napoleon and carried him through battles, was wounded eight times and was captured at the Battle of Waterloo and taken back to England where he died at the age of 38, and his skeleton was preserved as a war trophy and is at the National Museum the National Army Museum in London, minus a couple of body parts. And there's some confusion over this because that horse's name does not actually show in any of the lists of Napoleon's stables. So there's an interesting rabbit hole there maybe for those of us who love rabbit holes in history. I think it was a beautiful tribute as well when they repatriated the emperor's remains to France from St. Helena. The procession to Les Invalides included a lone riderless white horse, and some viewers were actually said to have been confused in believing that this might have been Marengo himself. And here is the parade harness from Charles X and Louis Philippe. These pieces are really, to me, they're really amazing to see because these are the things these people actually touched and used. I'm just, I'm always fascinated by bits and pieces of history like this. And you will move right into lots of weaponry and armor. And this was astonishing. There were guns in here that were so big and so long. I don't think I got a picture of the one. It was probably uh, 10 feet long. No one could lift it. It would, t it would be something that would be mounted, but it looked like a rifle. You will also see armor from all the way back to the Middle Ages, as well as weaponry and tools. The workmanship on some of these armor pieces is just 
stunning. You can stand here all day and look at the metal working on some of these details and some of the crazy, uh, the details on some of these uh, helmets is freaky. There is also some mounted men where you can see the armor and the horse. You can see Francois Premier on his grand stallion and look at the length of his legs. But there is a particular helmet that really stopped me cold. Here's, um, this helmet is so strange. There's a face within the face. I can't, I couldn't quit staring at this thing. It was so creepy. So lots of interesting metalwork. If you love this sort of thing, this is such a great museum to walk through. Do not skip it. There's also sort of a stunning and heartbreaking piece of armor that was taken from a soldier who was killed quite obviously on the battlefield at Waterloo. I cannot believe the damage to this piece of armor. They even have some of the regalia that the horses would wear as far as like head, like a helmet for your horse, which I found really interesting. Of course, one of the main things that you will come here to see is Napoleon's tomb, which is amazing. There are his tombs as well as two of his brothers and his son, Napoleon II, are buried here. And before we get into that, let me just quickly tell you that there is a, a legend slash possible actual story that not all of Napoleon's body is in this tomb. There is a part of him that he would probably not want to be without, which is said to be basically in a shoebox in New Jersey. Um, I won't say more than that, but if you can imagine a small part of your body that you wouldn't want removed, um, there is a family in New Jersey who claims to have that piece of Napoleon in a box under a bed or in a closet. Look it up, Google the story. It is an interesting trip down history and I believe the French government doesn't want to talk about it and they don't believe it's true, but um, if I was into archaeology, I would want to go find out for sure. So as you come into this astonishing place, it's amazing. It is the floors. I'm always just fascinated at the workmanship of all of these buildings, but especially the floors and the murals and paintings here, all amazing and gorgeous. Napoleon was brought here. He wasn't originally buried here when he died on St. Helena. He was brought back from St. Helena in 1840, and this tomb's planning actually only began then. It wasn't finished, and he wasn't brought to it until 1861, 21 years later. So he spent the meantime in a nearby chapel. In fact, the building of this tomb took so long that by the time it was actually finished, its original promoter, architect, and main sculptors had already died. His sarcophagus itself has its own long story. It was actually made from different stone from 10 different quarries around France, as well as marble and quartzite from Russia, which had to be quarried with special permission from Tsar Nicholas and then shipped to France to be sculpted. His son Napoleon II wasn't brought home from Vienna to be laid to rest next to his father until 1940. And in 1969, his coffin was actually put underground here and covered with marble, so it is not an above ground tomb. If you're planning a visit here, I would plan to spend a whole day wandering this amazing place. You'll be astonished at how cool it is. It's probably one of our favorite museums we've ever seen. And be aware, as we found out, I don't know if it's changed much, but the signage, again, it's a little hard to find your way around. Make sure you find all of the departments. There are seven different spaces to see here. There's the main courtyard with the artillery collection. There's the old department with pieces from the 13th to 17th century. There's the modern department with Louis XIV through Napoleon III, then the tomb of Napoleon, the contemporary department, which takes us through 1945, including World War I and World War II rooms, the Charles de Gaulle Monument, and the Cathedral of Saint-Louis des Invalides. And if you can believe it, after this museum, we took a nap and went to the Louvre for our first visit. I will link to that video as soon as it is posted. I hope this inspires you to visit this amazing museum in Paris. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.